Today on Engineering Newswire, we're using drones to assess cyclone carnage, sword fighting with robots, and riding in the first compressed air-powered car. In March, Cyclone Pam devastated Vanuatu, a little island nation in the South Pacific Ocean with a name that I can only pronounce due to an old friend's addiction to scripted survival. The disaster relief mission required an immediate and safe response under terrible conditions. So what was the government to do when the roads were closed and the infrastructure was failing? You fly in Dago. Appropriately named after the Latin verb for hunting and tracking, Indago is a small unmanned aerial system from Lockheed Martin that the Vanuatu government called in to assess Pam's damage without straining its limited resources. Operated by the Australian company Hellowest, Indago is more drone than RC airplane. In over a two week period, the quadcopter provided 360 degree surveillance of a three mile radius for about 45 minutes at a time. The drone only weighs five pounds, so operators can carry it around in a backpack and it doesn't require a large clear area for launch and recovery. Really, you unfold it, and it's airborne in a matter of minutes. According to UNICEF, 132,000 people were impacted by Pam's wrath. 54,000 of those were kids. This mission is a great example of how drones can be more than a toy making headlines in a restricted airspace, but rather a tool used for the greater good. Japan's Namiki Laboratory has unveiled a sword fighting robot. According to the lab, the system is controlled by a stereo high-speed vision system as an example of human-robot dynamic interaction systems. It works by recognizing the position of the robot's sword and the human attempting to attack it. This method of detecting the turning point is called Change Finder, which allows the robot to identify the moment when the human starts to move. Let's see this thing in action. The system predicts what possible trajectories the human may take with their sword by employing a least squares method before judging the pending attack and generating a suitable defense. The lab's experimental results verify the algorithm's effectiveness and have us all fearing for the future in which robots are smarter than humans and take over the world. Oh, 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 oh. Zero Pollution Motors, or ZPM, the developer of the tiny car AirPod, plans to produce and sell the first compressed air-powered car in the United States by the second half of 2015. The AirPod, which is marketed as the solution to urban pollution and urban mobility, will be sold for around $10,000. Each joystick-controlled vehicle can reach 50 miles per hour and has a range of approximately 80 miles. According to the company, the 617-pound AirPod can be filled with compressed air in less than five minutes and costs less than $2 to fill. Last Friday, ZPM's founder, Ethan Tucker, appeared on ABC's Shark Tank and won $5 million from one of the investors in exchange for 50% equity in the company. The company now plans to create local turnkey micro-production factories to build and sell the vehicles. However, many skeptics have voiced their concerns over this technology, asking where will owners find readily available compressed air, or if the vehicle really produces zero emissions since compressed air is produced using electricity. I guess we'll just have to wait until later this year to find out how the company plans to tackle these obstacles. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in an upcoming episode. For the PD&D channel, I'm Melissa Fossbender and this has been your Engineering Newswire.